Hi, I'm Greg Rabba, and I'm going to talk briefly about content governance and how important it is to the users of your website. Content governance is a process. Specifically, it's the ongoing process of ensuring that all the content that needs to be on your website gets there, and that all of the content that is on your website is relevant. You can look at it this way. People are going to be handing your website little slips of paper or content. Now, if your website doesn't have an effective way to manage all of that paper, Soon it's going to have its hands full of it, its pockets stuffed with it, and an apartment with little pieces of it all over the floor. That's where content governance comes in. Content governance is a four-part process that handles the collection of those little pieces of paper, turns them into effective, usable information, and puts them in a neat order and gets rid of the old, irrelevant ones. That's enough with the metaphor. There are four major phases of content governance. Request, create, manage, and retire. Maintaining this four-step cycle keeps the site clear, relevant, and effective for its users. Understanding who is requesting the creation of content on your site and why they want it is crucial. If Joe and PR wants a page for pictures of the latest construction to show how the school is expanding, that's great. But if Carol and Payroll wants a page dedicated to a live stream of her cat, that should probably be stopped. That's where the request comes in. People who want content on your site need to submit a request, preferably in a form with some information on it. Ownership. We need to know who is requesting the content. That way we can tag it to them and whatever group they're in, make it easier to locate later. That way, if Joe from PR wants to make sure he included all the information in his request, he can locate, her, locate it and review it later. Purpose. We need to know why the content needs to be created. We need to make sure it's justified. Carol from Payroll probably can't justify that live stream of her cat, so when her request is reviewed, it would probably be denied, I hope, keeping irrelevant or low-value content off of your website. Resources. The person requesting the content needs to outline the resources, including skills and time, needed for the project. This way we can make sure that we have everything we need to create that content. Here's where Joe would mention that he needs pictures of the new construction, and would probably note that we need to hire a photographer to take those pictures. Without this, we might be left scrambling to locate a photographer or any other resources last minute, or even be unable to get them to make the project. Criteria. We need to set a goal for this content. What makes it worth it? Be it a number of page views or impressions, or even if it's done effectively, or, or if the content is well received. To do this, the requester needs to set an expiration date when the content can be reviewed and analyzed. This serves to give your content a lifespan of sorts and to keep unused content off the system. Creating the content is one of the more interesting aspects of the project. It's where you get all the creative types involved. Unfortunately, the creative types tend to need someone to keep them efficient and effective, and that's what this phase is all about. Access. Not everyone needs to see the content for the page about the new construction while it's being created. Not even Carol and Payroll, and especially not the public. You need to set permissions and security to keep people who don't need to see the information from seeing it. Nothing ru ruins a user experience like stumbling across a half-finished page, and nothing ruins, a nothing ruins a day like having to sort through a lot of unneeded information. We also have workflow, which is a process uh, that is an art in and of itself. You have scrum sheets, Gantt maps, all these things are for making sure you know who is accountable for what in a project and when they need to be held accountable for it. The photographer needs to get those pictures taken by Monday so that Joe has time to review and approve them. Workflow is there to ensure all of this happens. This phase is where a lot of information collected in the request phase comes into play. Once the content is live on the web, it needs to be managed. It needs to be maintained and kept up to date. Updating content is crucial, be it categorizing it so it's easier to access adding new information to it, or even reattributing the author of it after Joe quit PR because Carol kept sending him videos of her cat. This helps to keep your content organized, clear, and accounted for. All content eventually goes out of date, and when it comes to the end of its life cycle, it needs to be taken care of. Sometimes it can just be updated so that it's now back in date, but other times it needs to be archived or even deleted to keep the site clear for your users. Whether or not it's archived or deleted depends upon the usefulness of the content. If the content might still have some use, some niche use, you can archive it so that people who know what they're looking for can find it later. But if there's absolutely no point in keeping the content around, it can be deleted. That way it's clear from your site, 
and nobody can find it. This is where the criteria set in the request phase comes into play. You use this to analyze what the content is about, and it keeps everything relevant for your users nicely. That, in a nutshell, is content governance.